Greetings hobbyists, this is Artisans of Vool, and in this video we're having a look at a 3D scanner with a difference. So this is the S1 3D scanner from Gratkit, and if you haven't heard of Gratkit before, you're not alone. Until they contacted me, I hadn't either, but they said they had a 3D scanner which had some really notable differences that bring something different to the 3D scanning world, and I thought, hey yeah, let's give it a go. Now sometimes when you're opening something from beginning to end it's just a lovely process and that starts with this black box with this really nice silver lining over it and it gives you an idea of things to come. Gratkit have spared no expense on this and you'll see that in a second. It's one of the first things that makes this scanner very different to what has come before it, especially at this price range. Normally I wouldn't spend much time on unboxing, but I do think this is important to show. So this first layer, fairly standard. You've got a model to try out, you've got the scanner, and you've got some instructions. I will say this handle is really nice and it's made of metal. But it's the layer underneath where stuff starts getting awesome. So this is the turntable that comes with the Gratkit S1. And you can see it's not your normal turntable. All the parts of it slot together really satisfyingly. Listen to this. All the parts of it that can be are made of metal and all the screws that hold it together are all internal to the parts. You just place them together and then tighten the screws. Everything just fits together perfectly, there's no resistance, it's just beautiful. Even the cable you need to connect the turntable to the 3D scanner has this wonderful little recess so that everything's neat and out of the way. Just put the 3D scanner on its handle on it, plug it in and you're good to use the scanner with the turntable. This is a crazy level of detail for a scanner at this price. All the other 3D scanners at this price point have some cheap turntable that you could get off of Amazon. And that Allen key you know you're going to lose? Nope, there's a nice magnetised recess for that as well. Now on to scanning and we'll try out with this test model that it comes with. And we'll just keep all the settings as auto. So what you can see happening at this point is that the scanner takes a couple of flashes of light and that gives all of the information and then it rotates the turntable and does another couple of flashes of light. We can look around the model as it's doing this and see how this is adding to it at each pass and you can see how quick this is at getting a lot of detail. And that's the other thing about this scanner that is really noteworthy. This is not like your normal scanners which work off of either infrared light or blue laser lines. This is a DLP scanner, and I don't think there's another DLP scanner out there. Now what this means is it should be able to capture huge amounts of information. You can see the density of the point cloud that's being collected in very little time, which means you can get very accurate readings really quickly. I've been told this also makes the scanner very safe compared to blue light scanners, which you really don't want getting in your eyes, though it is very bright, so you probably don't want to be scanning someone's face directly. And because this captures data so quickly, this is going to be really good for handheld scans in theory as well, and we'll do a handheld scan in a second. Now if you know 3D scanning already, you probably recognise that this is very impressive in terms of its feature tracking. I'm not sure whether that's to do with the fact that it's connected to the turntable and therefore knows where the model is, which would make sense, we've got this specialist turntable, and you'll also notice that it's taken away the base perfectly. And again, when I do a handheld scan, you'll see how good this is at working out what is something that's not meant to be scanned and leaving you just with the model that you want. Now we'll just go through the processing, which is very simple. We just say that we're okay with this scan. If you want to do multiple scans of the same object, this will also join them together. At this point, it's confirmed the point cloud. You set what you want for your fusion settings and then click go. And that's the level of detail that you're gonna get in your final model. It just processes through the point cloud and Gratkit told me they've done a lot to make this as efficient as possible, meaning you can do this on a laptop easily. You don't need to rely on some big hefty computer, though I will say I haven't got a laptop to test that out on. And here you end up with your final result. Now looking at this, we can see whatever this does to process these scans is very clever. There's just no overlap at all. It's just perfectly smoothed out. You haven't got any joins between each of the scans. We also have the post-processing options you'd normally expect. We can simplify the mesh to make it have less geometry, which is good if you're gonna be bringing this into certain programs. We can smooth it out, not that I need this smoothed anymore. And then we can remove any individual faces, which is always good to do, even though I can't see any. And finally, we can fill any holes, which obviously there's one on the base because we didn't scan it. And you can set what size of hole you want to be filled in so you can control which holes are filled and which not. And then you just apply it. And again, this works very, very well, making a really smooth infill, which is perfectly manifold, very important for 3D printing. 
so you really don't need to involve any other software. Though I will bring this into Blender, just to do a quick check on it, and as you can see this is entirely manifold. One of the top two readings here would show if there were any issues, and there are none, which is great. And again, I haven't come across a scanner that will do this perfectly every single time, and I have tried this on other models, and it does work out perfectly every single time. Now I wanted to show a handheld scan as well, and I didn't really know where to focus on the scan itself or of me doing the scanning, but this is getting a very high density mesh very quickly without me having to scan over the same area multiple times. I can also pause it from the unit itself with the play button and then just move it around. And again, because this is doing a very good job of recognizing what the ground surface is and not scanning it, that's not a problem. And then it recognizes where we're scanning from and I can scan from that new angle. Again, getting lots of information very quickly. It's also picking up the shelves in the background here, which shows a really good range to this and we'll just delete those out later. So again, move it around start scanning again, and then it'll work out where it is, and we can continue the scan. Now at this point, I'm gonna try and mess this up on purpose, and you can see I'm having to twitch around quite a lot to do this, and then hopefully, there we go, I've got it slightly having a bit of an error. So what I'm gonna do is pause it, and if I zoom in here, we can see this error. So you can see an extra barrel, which is obviously not right. I'm gonna use this awesome feature, which is the rollback feature. And we can just gradually go back to the point where we don't have this error anymore. And once we're happy with where we are, we can just continue scanning. Now you've probably seen enough of that handheld scanning now just to see what's going on. So I'll just speed through this and then we'll just see the end result. So once again, I'll confirm this and I'm creating a mesh. And then once that's done, we'll get rid of those additional bits of information on the outside where we picked up some of the background. And again, very easy to do. We just click through and then select the bits that we want to delete. So there we go, done. So here's our result. And again, the fact that this creates these perfectly constructed meshes with no join lines or errors is insanely impressive. I think every other scanner I've ever used, there's going to be some cleanup of models that are this small with this much high detail. Now one area that possibly could use a little bit of improvement is on these sharp edges. And maybe this is the price we're paying for this processing and making sure everything lines up perfectly, that some of these sharp edges are a little bit more rounded than potentially I'd like. And I do wish there was a way of going into the software and potentially controlling that. And we'll have a look at one more scan to demonstrate how far this scanner can go. And I want to be clear that this is scanning an object that is smaller than this scanner is designed to scan. So we're really pushing it to its limit here. So we're going to be scanning this tiny arm. And you can see compared to my thumb, I mean, this is miniature. And the S1 is stated to scan as low as five centimeters in size and as big as a meter. So that's a pretty generous range, but it doesn't quite cover as small as this. And when we set this going straight away, we've got a pretty good success. Now this is being aided by my 3D scanning tower, which is meant for scanning small objects. I've got a video on that being created if you wanna have a look at it. But even with that, there's a lot of scanners that won't have a chance at capturing any of the detailing that you can see here. And this is doing a really, really solid job. And I scan a lot of miniatures, so I think I'm fairly equipped to say that. Now I'm just gonna zoom in a bit here on the screen and you can see we're even capturing all of the fine details between these really thin taruges underneath the armor plating. And for scale referencing, each of those taruges is about one and a half millimeters in size. So the gap is even smaller and it is being captured. You can see that in the point cloud. Now once again, I'll just speed through this. It's just capturing the rest of the scan and we'll do the process, have a look at the whole point cloud and then generate the mesh. Now just zooming in here, you can see we have captured an insane amount of detail for something that's not designed for scanning small objects. And we can even see the trim on that bit of the forearm. So I'd say that's pretty good evidence that GratKit's claim that a DLP scanner is going to capture more points very quickly is pretty justified. So here's the final mesh, and again, a very good looking object which we could 3D print from. There's no overlaps or internal errors. And this detailing is still looking pretty good. We can comfortably make out things like the taruges and the trim, but again, we do get this slight rounding of the hard edges, but this is on a very, very small model. I would say again, judging from the point cloud, I think this software is possibly over-processing a little bit and rounding off those sharp edges a little bit more than is desirable, 
But again, this is a software issue, something that hopefully GratKit can look at. And if that does happen, I'll definitely say in the description, so do have a quick read of that. I also at the end wanted to quickly show this. So this is a 3D scan of this gray and green shushing device for a baby. I just wanted to scan something in color. I know it's not the focus of the channel, but if someone's looking for a 3D scanner to be able to create a 3D image that people can look at on a shop, this is again great for it. And this has got really good color fidelity. This is very accurate to the gray and green of this object. And even with this quite complex front with a lot of small holes in it, it's done a very, very good job. So that's more something you're looking for compared to 3D scanning for 3D printing like I do. The S1 is definitely capable of doing that. In the description, I'll also put a link to the Kickstarter for this, where this is going to be at a bargain price of $649 from what I've been told by GratKit. And considering that that price includes the turntable, that is a very competitive price. If you do have any questions, feel free to ask them in the comments section and I can answer them as best as I can. And I hope to see you in the next video. Have a great day, guys.